Hey guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Satanic Panic video. And this time I would like to present this. Hello, I'm Gary Greenwald, and over the past several years, the Eagle's Nest Ministries has exposed certain things like rock and roll music, Dungeons and Dragons, marijuana, and even the New Age movement. And now we feel there's another attack upon our society. If I say something like wicked witches and demon clouds and spell books and even the zone of eternal evil, what comes to mind? What do you think of? Do you think of a coven of witches or a seance? Watch now. So this is Deception of a Generation. Now it's by Eagle Nest Ministries, which to me is very reminiscent of the hyper-testosterone um, karate group that Johnny sets up in the Karate Kid TV series, Eagle Claw Karate. But perhaps this is some biblical reference that I don't quite get, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But this is a documentary going into the dangers of satanic influences in kids' television, in kids' cartoons, kids' comics, and kids' toys. But it's of particular interest to me in a series about the satanic panic on the role-playing industry in that they treat Dungeons & Dragons as a kid's toy. And they'll get to that later, but let's go through it first of all. Because Gary here is not dealing with this by himself, he's bringing in a friend. Let's meet Phil. Now, I've got a guest today. His name is Phil Phillips. He's from Texas. He has been involved in missions work in his life, and he has now felt called to study the effects of cartoons and children's toys and even TV programs upon our children today. So while Phil is an expert on all things kids' cartoon and kids' toys, he seems to spend a lot of his time watching kids' TV and visiting toy stores. But then again, so do I, so let's not criticise him too heavily for that. But he seems to get a lot of his facts wrong, as we'll see as we go through these. But let's start off with his major conclusion first. Now, could we say that there is witchcraft and occultic practices that are actually being portrayed in these cartoons? Oh yes, the witchcraft and, and occult practices are not make-believe. They're taken from actual witchcraft, actual pagan religions, levitation, mind control, astral projection, and other forms of, of witchcraft ceremonies are portrayed within the cartoons. So Phil is convinced that cartoons are based on real satanic worship stuff. That basically the rituals that you see in these kids' cartoons are going to be the same ones that are practiced by various satanic groups. It's an introduction for kids to Satanism. Now, he's not only got problems with Scooby-Doo, he's got problems with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Stealer Skeletor introduces the power of the pyramid cult. Now, he walks to the center of the pyramid, he sits inside, and he starts to steal the power of Ethernia. So our expert on He-Man and kids' cartoons gets the name of Eternia wrong, first of all, calling it Ethernia, which is a slightly strange pronunciation, especially for someone who is, as he says, is an expert on this. So perhaps he's not watched as much as he thinks, and that will crop up again and again. But the major point of this is he's pointing out that Skeletor, the bad guy in the cartoon, is doing evil satanic things. And that's kind of the point of the cartoon. He's the bad guy. He's the guy that's got to be fought. Kids aren't supposed to be emulating him. They're supposed to be emulating He-Man, who is fighting Skeletor and is stopping these things happening. You know, yoga exercises. Well, we did see yoga exercises last week in Skeletor taking that position. Uh, let's go on to Thundercats for a moment, because I believe there's something to do with the martial arts in the Thundercats series. Yes, they, they are involved in the martial arts. They're also half men, half lion again. So, apparently they've watched an episode where Skeletor does yoga, which is a massive threat to their religion, and to kids in general. Actually, I must have missed that one. It must have been a very relaxing episode for Skeletor, but I'm not a huge uh, He-Man fan. I am far more interested in Thundercats, which is why my eyebrow instantly went up when they say that the Thundercats are half lion beasts. Because they're not. Lion-o is, but Panthro, funny enough, is half panther. Cheetara is half cheetah. They're not half lion. And for an expert to just be claiming this, instead of saying they're half cat, um, 
is just ridiculous. It really doesn't seem like he's watched much of this and isn't much of an expert at all. In the name of Jesus, I break every stronghold and I command that Satan lose his hold upon your household and I praise God for it. Amen. See so I've skipped through most of the 45 minutes of the first episode of this because it's about cartoons and that really isn't what my channel's about. We're trying to get the Dungeon Dragon stuff here. But I did want to show you that section at the end of the first episode because what is scarier? Uh, Gary Greenwald threatening you with hellfire and damnation or Skeletor doing yoga? So we're on to the second episode and skipping through the first 10 minutes or so where they explain how demonic Barbie and Ken are because obviously they are the most satanic figures out there we're going to get on to the core of this episode for us which is Dungeons and Dragons. Let's go into the more blatantly occultic things. Yes. I remember a couple of years ago I preached a message for television called Dungeons and Dragons and in it I dealt with the occultic overtones, the witchcraft, the demonism, the spells uh, that were perpetrated through the game Dungeons and Dragons and I felt at the time that... So now we're getting on to the meat of the episode for us because while Phil is an expert on kids cartoons and kids toys Gary is the Dungeons and Dragons expert. Children were identifying so closely with those little uh, pieces in the game that we even had uh, paper, newspaper clippings of children that had dropped out. Some uh, they thought had even committed suicide because of the game. Yeah. And even more has come to light since then. And so as a Dungeons and Dragons expert, he of course knows that Dungeons and Dragons is played with little pieces, which are what kids are getting compelled by. And kids are dropping out of school. Imagine that kids becoming so worked up by something that they're enjoying that they ignore their schoolwork. I certainly didn't do that with video games. And I wanted to show a clip from Dungeons and Dragons right now showing the occultic overtones of the game. So here's from the cartoon show that's now come from the game. Here it is, Dungeons and Dragons. Excellent. Soon the repairs will be completed. So skipping over Gary's repeated use of the word occultic, which doesn't sound right to my ears, but I looked it up and it is a word, so he's absolutely fine with that. Let's get to Venger. Now Venger is a fantastic design. Let's ignore all the Satanism and all that. The one-horned, one-winged demon. He looks brilliant. It's a brilliant piece of design work. But he's the bad guy. So the bad guy doing evil things is an element of every story. Whether you're telling a Dungeons and Dragons story about the half-demon bad guy, or you're telling a World War II story where the Nazis do bad things. Venger's gonna do bad things, and he's not the character to be emulated. Even if he looks great, he's not the hero. The heroes are the heroes, and the heroes fight him. Well, Phil, we've been watching a, a, a character here called Venger, and another black creature called Shadow Keeper, what, what do they represent to you? Oh, I believe that it's a direct depiction of Satan and his demon. Now, perhaps Phil's description of Venger and Shadow Keeper being a representation of Satan and his demons would have been strengthened if they'd actually called Shadow Keeper by his proper name, because his proper name is Shadow Demon. I think they'd make their argument a lot stronger if they'd said that one of the characters in the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon was actually called a demon. Uh, powers and demon friends. Uh, uh, they go forth for him. Uh, I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a direct uh, quote from the pit of hell, if you want to call it that. Now, I'm not quite sure what Phil's trying to say here, because I don't think Dungeons and Dragons is a quote from anywhere. It's not like it's a biblical quote that's been repurposed as the title of the role-playing game. I think Dungeons and Dragons was a brand new name, which Gary Gygax and Dave Arniston came up with. I don't know what Phil's getting at at all there. Uh, it is a mind-bending game, a mind-changing game. It is involved with all kinds of occult and pagan religion. The player's handbook includes over 160 pages of spells to be cast. But the spells in Dungeons and Dragons aren't real spells. They're no more real spells than the money in Monopoly is real money. Complaining that Dungeons and Dragons has spells in it, so that's satanic, is like complaining that Monopoly is destabilizing the economy because it's printing money. Let's look at one of the handbooks here. This is the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Monster Manual. Now, I wouldn't be my usual dickish self 
if I didn't point out, it's actually the Monster Manual 2. It says it on the cover. And it's full of monstrous figures and actually those creatures that the children can m imagine. And yeah. children's imaginations are very active, aren't they? Gary really blowing our minds here with information. Kids are imaginative. That's a revelation that none of us would have figured out by ourselves. I wonder how Phil will respond. Yes, very much so. Now let's look at another one of these. This is where we go into the Dungeon Master's Guide. Who is the Dungeon Master? Well, the Dungeon Master is a person who plays God in the game. And, uh, and he controls all the situations. In fact, the books tell him that he is, he is the God of the game. So the Dungeon Master is the God of the game. We've seen this one accusation before. While Dungeon Masters can represent gods in a game, they represent everybody else. They represent every dog, cat, flea bite, muddy stream, everything. They're the storyteller. And if they're telling a story which includes gods, then they're playing the gods. They are not the god of the game. And, uh, and he controls the situations in the game, controls the way the players are moving through the dungeons, and then, uh, then if he doesn't like someone, he can play pretty much against them. So a game where you play against somebody, that's an absolute revelation. That's very modern. How old is Jess? Do you think parents are aware that when the children play the game, that demon spirits are involved? I do not think that many parents are aware of what's inside the game. In fact, in my presentation, I show many pictures from the inside of the books just to show the images of this game. I yes. mean, the gruesomeness of this game and the occult link to it. Now, this part actually made me think. When I first started playing Dungeons & Dragons, I was about 13 years old. And I went round to a friend's house. It was in the next town. I had to cycle for miles to get there. But I played Dungeons & Dragons and I really enjoyed it. And after about three weeks playing, I wanted a Dungeon Master. So he was very kind enough to lend me the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Fiend Folio, and the Monster Manual. I got a loan of four books, and I took them away, and I sat writing. And my mother was very interested in why I was suddenly looking through these big books. I've always been a bit of a reader, but to see me with loads of pieces of paper writing stuff. So she asked, and she got involved. I told her that I was writing this story, that I was writing a situation that somebody else was going to play through. And I asked for suggestions. She came up with the f suggestion of the first NPC I created. I created a half-orc thief who was going to accompany the players and act as a guide. And she suggested the name Puck, which I believe is from Shakespeare. I'm not much of a Shakespearean uh, scholar, but I believe that's where she picked it up from. But my mum knew what I was getting into. At age 13, she was paying an interest in my activities. Now, perhaps, as I've said before, my mum was just great. But I think that's a lesson for us all. Get involved in your kids' hobbies. And it's a lesson to Christians. Get involved in your kids' hobbies. Pay attention to them. Don't just leave them to play games, to watch TV, and let that bring them up. Well, I know that when uh, I did my message, and this has happened, I have letter after letter where people took the pieces. Now, there's sixes involved in the pieces of the game, but they yes. take the pieces of the game, they would throw them in the incinerator or the fireplace, and screams would come out because there seemed to be some kind of spiritual forces inhabiting those pieces. So let's get this right. Gary got letters from people saying they burnt Dungeons & Dragons stuff, including dice, including miniatures, including the books. And when they burnt it, they heard satanic screams coming out as entities left them. That is crazy. And if he's looking at these people and not thinking that they're a bit soft in the head, that they've gone a bit mental, then shame on him. Because that's not real. If it's real, document it. Put it on video camera. This was 1985. Video cameras existed. Provide us with some evidence. Don't just give us rubbish about, oh, we thought we heard a scream when we burned our Dungeons and Dragons books. And children would drop out of life. They didn't want to study anymore. Really, Gary? Really? So the parents burnt their books. They destroyed their toys, burning dice, miniatures, books, taking away their hobbies, taking away the things that they share with friends. And the kids retracted into themselves. They refused to do schoolwork. They refused to associate with the rest of the family. Really? That comes as much of a shock to you? Uh, what, what are the pieces, for instance? Well, this game affects the most intelligent of our children. Why, thank you, Phil. I'll take that compliment. We're the most intelligent. Why that might that be? 
Is it because we're taking part in a game with puzzles, with riddles, we're doing math a lot, we're reading books? What about that might appeal to intelligent people or make people exercise their brains and become more intelligent? I'll let you work it out. And the pieces include white witches, wizards, necromancers, the, the clerics, that type of thing. It includes evil wizards. It's a white versus black witchcraft. The good versus evil is white versus black witchcraft. And Anton LaVey, the writer of the Satanist Bible, says there is no such thing as white witchcraft. Well, being a Satan worshiper, he should know. Yeah, he should know. So Satan worshippers are liars. They're devious. They're trying to corrupt children. But when they tell you that there's no difference between white and black magic, you're going to believe them. I'm sure that makes sense in somebody's world. Uh, this is a letter that came from a lady that had heard my cassette on Dungeons and Dragons, and she just mentions how it changed the personality of her young boy. The, she says, the cassette from the Eagle's Nest especially helped me with my boy, who was involved with D&D, at a private high school which promoted D&D as part of their attractive strategic game club. So the school promoted D&D by having a club. Well, when I was at school, a very long time ago, as is fairly obvious, the lunchtime clubs included a stamp collecting club and a chess club. I don't say that my school was promoting stamp collecting, was promoting chess. It was just providing a safe place for people to play games and to collect things. Kids to share their interests. And Dungeons and Dragons is just another one, isn't it? She says for a period of about six months we lost Tonio, our son. He became rebellious, disrespectful, lethargic. He made sneering faces at us and carried with him a very hostile spirit that could be felt wherever he went in the house. After much sorrow, Tonio finally let go of D&D only after his father forbid the game as his day's pastime. He couldn't make it his day's pastime. She said he had put aside all studies for this game. And again, kids becoming compelled by doing something they enjoy. Whether it's playing video games, whether it's watching TV play programs, whether it's playing football. Kids will avoid doing schoolwork and will avoid associating with their parents when they find an interest as they grow. And it's the parents' job to make sure that they do the important stuff. Whether that's making sure they do some chores around the house, whether it's doing their schoolwork. That's the parents' job. And blame a game because you haven't been paying attention and you haven't been doing your parents' job is just silly. There's anything else you want to say about Dungeons and Dragons? Well, the fact is, is that this, uh, this toy and cartoon series is bringing the occult to younger and younger children in a very real way. So, even saying, you're a Christian, you believe in all of this, you believe God is real, and therefore you believe that Satan, his opposition, is real as well. But, if you believe that your God is all-seeing and all-powerful, then shouldn't it just be a matter of saying a prayer to defeat Satan? Because your God is so powerful that he can stop that. The only way that you can believe that Satan gets his hooks into people is if you believe that Satan is more powerful. And isn't that kind of breaking your whole religion? But anyway, that's kind of the end of them talking about Dungeons and Dragons in the majority. They then go on to some movies and things, including some that I quite like. Well, Phil, now I think a lot of this can even go back, if we might divert, back to some of the movies that have been coming out, like Star Wars and uh, The Jedi, Return of the Jedi, and so forth. So, we're on to that satanic influence that is Star Wars and Return of the Jedi. But, what could be so bad about them? And, more importantly, what can they get wrong about Star Wars? It's such a cultural touchstone that surely even they know everything about Star Wars. We're looking at Yoda right now, and, uh, and Yoda was called the Zen Master. Of course, this was based on Zen Buddhism. So Yoda was the Zen Master? Where was that? I don't remember seeing that. I don't think I've ever seen that written down in any of the really weird and ex strange expanded universe novels. Yoda is a Jedi Master, following the religion of the Jedi in a galaxy far, far away. That's just plain wrong. How can they get so much wrong while referring to these things? But anyway, now they move on to the Smurfs of all things. Obvious satanic influence in those little blue people. And then they have an enemy called Gargamel. Now Gargamel, in a recent episode, I saw him draw a five-pointed star, the pentagram, on the ground. Right. He lit candles at each point, which is an actual witchcraft practice. He started to dance inside the pentagram, chanting a magical chant 
At that point, a book opened up across the room, and something left the book and entered his physical body, giving him power to levitate and to, to do battle against the Smurfs. And once again, it's the bad guy, it's Gargamel, who's doing the bad stuff to fight the Smurfs. He's the bad guy, he's not to be emulated, he's to be fought and defeated. That's the whole element of these series, which they seem to think's bad that it features it, but it's teaching kids to fight evil. Surely that's a good thing. In fact, one of the most innocent, if you could pick up that pony there, yeah, is one called My Pony. This now, is My Pony. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you walk through a toy store... Oh, come on, Phil, get it right. It's not My Pony, it's My Little Pony. It's only three words. When you're hanging around the little girl's section of the toy store, can't you even just note that down and get it right? I've got two sons. I've never had reason for going out and buying girls' toys. But even I know that one. But anyway, after that, they talk about some other kids' toys. Nothing really notable. Lots of things which appeared in the 80s and have since been forgotten. But then they do an advert. So let's have a look at that. Some of you that are watching today might want to receive all the cassettes that uh, cover the message that Phil's been sharing today because we've dealt with everything from occulty cartoons to toys to innocuous little figures to the new craze in comic books and I'd like to make those available to you as well as my cassette on Dungeons and Dragons and we have some other little added bonuses today so let me bring the announcer on right now and he'll explain how you can get all these. Here's our announcer. <laughs> As you've been watching today's shocking interview, many of you may want to share this message with family and friends. Evil powers are trying to brainwash this generation of children, but the truth will set them free. You can take that truth to them. Let's pray that churches across the nation will rise up and expose this deception of a generation. Today's interview includes materials taken and now offered in three cassette messages. The cassettes include Spiritual Warfare in Your Child, and Deception of a Generation, both by Phil Phillips. The third cassette is titled Dungeons and Dragons by Gary Greenwald. As a bonus, the Eagle's Nest is including the book Breaking Spiritual Dullness and Barriers in Children, an outstanding expose of many of the evil deceptions being perpetrated on young people today. You'll also receive Phil Phillips' newspaper titled Child Effects, updating you on the latest occultic attacks on your children. To receive all three cassettes, the book and the newspaper, simply request the Child Deception Offer and send any donation of $15 or more to The Eagle's Nest, Post Office Box 15,000, Santa Ana, California, 92705. Again, request the Child Deception Offer and send $15 or more to The Eagle's Nest, Post Office Box 15,000, Santa Ana, California, 92705. May the Lord bless you and your stand for righteousness. And now back to Gary Greenwald and Phil Phillips. Now, as well as being quite well presented, I played that in full because I thought that gets to the core of this video. Because these guys are not trying to preach to you. They're not trying to save your souls. They're not trying to save your kids' souls. They're trying to upsell you things. They want you to buy their story tapes. They want you to buy their newsletters. They want to profit off scaring you. And that's what this is all about. And we're getting towards the end of the videos. This is the second episode. There are only the two. And we have one more rant from Gary. So let's have a look at that. These things are occultic, they're accursed, they teach the children to get into spells and to witchcraft and to serve demon powers and demon occultic uh, pagan religions are, uh, the mystic religions of the East are all propagated through this and I pray in the name of Jesus today that any of you that have this, ba this bondage in your household, your children are rebellious and, and being drawn by these things, I pray in Jesus' name that God would break that bondage today. We loose it right now and we put the blood of Jesus over you, your family, and your children. God bless you now from the eagle's nest. So he puts the blood of Jesus over you and your family. But isn't that kind of breaking what the whole sacrifice of Christ was all about? Wasn't he freeing us from the need to do blood sacrifices and animal sacrifices that he made the big sacrifice to free us of all that? But anyway, 
I think we've been through this. There were no good points in here. These guys were just ranting to try and make their own profit to sell things. And the fact that these are still for sale shows how they are just trying to make money off it. It's just a grift. But anyway, as usual, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, especially about something so silly. So thank you very much for watching. As always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.